Established over 250 years ago in Dublin, Ireland, the firm of Rigby is one of the oldest gun-making companies in the British Isles. Transferring the business to London in 1865, direct descendant John Rigby chose this time to establish himself in one of the world's great gun-making centres. With a reputation founded on high-quality craftsmanship and reliability, throughout their history, Rigby have manufactured various firearms from dueling pistols to shotguns. It was, however, in the mid-19th century, during the zenith of firearm invention and the change from muzzle-loading to breech-loading systems, that Rigby became involved in the development of the new breech-loading weapons, and in particular, military and sporting rifles. During this period, many untamed areas of North America, Africa and Asia were being opened up to sportsmen eager to pursue the most dangerous sport of all, the hunting of big game. Rigby's reputation for supplying hunting rifles throughout this time is mentioned positively and affectionately in almost every book published on big game hunting this century. The certainty of absolute reliability and accuracy when facing dangerous game that could hit back has given Rigby rifles a legendary reputation amongst big game hunters worldwide. As a result of this, there is now great interest in the management of deer populations to produce the best possible antler quality. This passionate fascination for trophy heads has turned many hunters worldwide into some of the most ardent and dedicated conservationists, deeply committed to the survival and well-being of their quarry. In Britain and much of Europe, the destruction of dangerous predators long ago left the welfare of wild deer in the hands of man. In order to produce antlers of consistently high quality, deer must be in balance with their environment. Poorly fed, stressed or diseased animals do not thrive, and deer that do not thrive will not develop good antlers. Though Britain is one of the most densely inhabited countries in Europe, it can boast thriving populations of several species of wild deer. Commonest of these non-natives is the diminutive muntjac, a small deer from Southeast Asia. Although only a resident in the UK for a hundred years and originally very susceptible to low temperature, the modern muntjac has adapted to this problem by growing a heavier winter coat. The casting of the antlers by mature bucks in late spring and the growing of the new set during summer coincides with most other species of deer, although this cycle can be less well defined in younger animals due to the non-seasonal fawning of the muntjac. Living as they do in habitat ranging from suburban gardens to mature woodland, often in densely populated areas, the hunting of this tiny deer can pose many challenges to the stalker. It is also very common to discover other species of deer which cohabit the same area as the muntjac. Developing practice and concerns for humane control of muntjac suggest that only juvenile and non-nursing does should be culled. However, when controlling excessive numbers, immature males may be culled to help correct the population balance. Unchecked populations of deer in a confined area not only endanger other species of wildlife by stripping the resources of the habitat, but eventually overflow and often compete directly with humans for land and food, a conflict no species has ever yet won. As most species of deer frequent heavy cover, Coming to terms with an individual trophy animal can be very time-consuming. 
Knowledge of the elements and adapting to the location is essential. Although some areas may allow for stalking on foot, in many situations the only really safe procedure is the use of an elevated platform. Shooting boxes sighted in locations known to be favoured haunts allow for a more thorough observation and selection of the quarry, an advantage not always possible at ground level. The placing of the stalker's scent high above the hunting area will also be beneficial in his search for a trophy animal. Muntjac use open areas and rides in broad daylight more readily than other deer. They are soon attracted to places where food is easily available. Many deer may be seen and passed up in the search for the correct animal. Eventually, the combination of fieldcraft, patience and luck may offer the stalker the opportunity to collect the trophy he has spent so many days pursuing. Revenue gained from the sale of surplus animals as trophies helps subsidize the income to many estates, creating an incentive to conserve wildlife habitat, thereby increasing the survival prospects of many other species. Taking out the oldest members of the male population as trophies ensures that the individual, perhaps close to the end of his natural life, has fully contributed his characteristics to the gene pool. Also, antler from these old timers are very often of a far higher density than that from younger animals. Muntjac are a primitive deer species with very simple antlers. They habitually produce single spikes with more or less curved tips and occasionally small brow tines. To the trophy hunter, a mature buck with antlers of 10 centimeters or more would be considered a real prize. Additionally, the male muntjac grows two long, razor-sharp tusks, which they will use to great effect if provoked. As with all game, once dead, the carcass should be handled with care and respect to ensure the quality of the meat once it finally reaches the table. <laughs> 